Okay, hello and welcome to lesson 14 of Additional Maths. And today we're going to be looking at trigonometric equations. So before you do this lesson, you should have had some uh, basis in the world of trigonometry. So you should understand how to use Sokotoa, um, the sine, the cosine and the, the tan ratios for right angle triangles to work out sides and lengths and angles. Um, and you should also have seen uh, the sine rule, the cosine rule, and the area of a triangle formula for, for all types of triangles, not just right angle. Okay, so you should be versed in this topic a little bit. And we're going to take you beyond to, to an, an A-level quality in this topic. Um, firstly, by solving trigonometric equations. Now, the prerequisite knowledge we need for this, as I've said, is... Uh, understanding of the, the sine, cosine and tangent ratios. So for this specific lesson, we're going to need you to know the graphs of y equals sine x, y equals cos x, y equals tan x. OK, so I'm just going to quickly run through each of those. OK, so you should have seen these before. But if you haven't, here is what they are. Um, so the sine curve is looks like this between zero and 360 degrees okay so that there is 180 so sine of 180 is zero sine of 90 is one so it goes up to a maximum of one sine of 270 is minus one so it goes to a minimum of minus one and then it keeps repeating this process forever okay with negative values of of the angle and with values of the angle beyond 360. Okay, so y equals sine of theta gives this graph. So that's a wave function that just fluctuates and repeats every 360 degrees ad infinitum. So the next one, y equals cos x or y equals cos theta because I've chosen um, the x axis, I've called it the theta axis, starts at one goes down to zero at 90, 180 it's at minus one, at 270 it's at zero, and at 360 it's back to one. So it repeats again every 360, but it starts at a different point on the curve. So that's 90, 180, 270, and 360. And then it repeats again and again. It keeps doing this process again and again um, for all angles from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that's the y equals cos of theta graph. And finally, the tan graph will look like this. So this one is different. It's not a wave function. It's, it's a discontinuous graph in, in terms that it has breaks in the graph at what are called asymptotes. So values of theta which don't work in the function. So at 90 degrees, there's an asymptote, which means that there is a break in the graph. If you try to type into your calculator, as long as it's in degrees mode, if you try to type in tan of 90, it would give you math error. OK, and the same at 270. There's another asymptote. So basically, it has this shape, this sort of stretched out shape which has a repetition of every 180 degrees that that same shape repeats okay so that'll that this this graph will continue again from negative infinity to positive infinity so this shape will repeat every 180 degrees in that region okay so there's 360 degrees there and that there is 180 degrees okay so you need to be able to answer the, the questions we're going to be doing today. You need to be able to sketch these graphs pretty quickly. OK, so you need to practice sketching them so that you can do them really quickly. So if I asked you to draw to, to solve an equation with involving cos, you would quickly do a quick sketch like this. So you would get your pen, you know, it starts at one and then you just do that that graph. And if you need to go beyond, you would just keep going. OK, and then you would start writing your numbers. So there's 90, 180, 270, 
360, etc., continuing on forever. Okay, so going from a maximum of one to a minimum of minus one. I didn't write that on there. One and minus one. With the tan graph, by the way, there is no maximum minimum. It goes on forever up to up to positive infinity. It, it tends towards this asymptote. It never reaches it. Okay, so you need to be able to draw those graphs in order to be able to solve trigonometric equations. Here's the first one. Find all values of theta in the interval zero degrees is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to 720 degrees, for which sine of theta is equal to 0 0.3. So that's asking for all angles between zero and 720 degrees for which this equation is true. Okay. In order to solve this, you need to sketch the graph of y equals sine of theta between zero and 720 degrees. And then you need to find all the angles which give a y value, a height on that graph of 0 0.3 on the sine curve. Okay. So I'm going to firstly draw the graph. So between, we know that the sine curve repeats every 360 degrees. So between zero and 720, it'll repeat twice. Okay. So you'll have your curve between zero and 360, and then it'll repeat again to 720. It doesn't really matter how accurate, how, how well you've drawn the graph, as long as it's relatively, relatively okay. Okay. Don't be too worried about having it perfectly drawn so that the scale is exactly the same. Here, my my distance, if I measured it with a ruler between zero and 360 is probably greater than my distance between 360 and 720, but I'm not gonna get too worried about that. I'm just gonna start writing in the numbers that are key on my scale. There's 180, there's 360, and there's 720, okay? This one here is 540. Okay, next, what I want is I want to know what heights are on my graph have a height of 0 0.3. I know the top of my graph is one, the bottom of my graph is minus one, okay? And I, here is the graph of y equals sine of theta. And I'm trying to find out when sine of theta is, is 0 0.3, okay? So I'm trying to find out when y in effect is 0 0.3 on this graph. So you go to your y-axis and you go to 0 0.3, which is about there. Then you simply draw across from 0 0.3 all the way across this graph. And it gives you four different angles between zero and 720. And there they are. I'm gonna call them A, B, C, and D. So the solutions to this equation will be the values of A, B, C, and D. What you need to do now is to use your calculator to find the first one. Your calculator is useful and it will find the first one. It won't find them all. To find them all, you need to use your knowledge of the graph. Okay. So firstly, to find the first one, if sine theta is 0 0.3, then I know that theta is going to be equal to the inverse of sine of 0.3 okay if i do the ratio if i do the function sine to theta and get 0.3 then i need to do the inverse function to 0.3 to get back to theta okay so that on the calculator as long as your calculator is in degrees mode will give you 17.5 degrees to one decimal place when we're working with angles in degrees, it's nice giving our angles to one decimal place. Okay, so that's A. A is 17.5 degrees. So now we can just look at the, the beautiful symmetry of our graph and decide the values of B, C, and D. If I zoom in to my graph, okay, A I know is 17.5. So I need to deduce what B is. If we look at the graph, we can see that this distance here must be 
from zero across to A is 17.5. And with the symmetry of my graph, the sine curve is nicely, beautifully symmetrical. I know this distance will also be 17.5. And hence B will be 180 minus 17.5. So I can write that down. So theta is 17.5 or 180 minus 17.5 or the next one. I know that the graph repeats every 360 degrees. So if I have my value of A here, this value here is also 17 and a half on from 360, or in effect, 17.5. If I add 360 to it, I will get the next value. And B and D match up 360 degrees apart. So if I add 360 to B, I'll get D as well. So once I've got A and B, all I need to do is add 360 to both of those, and I've got C and D. So my answers will be 17.5, 180 minus 17.5, 17.5 plus 360. And finally, 180 minus 17.5 plus 360. So those answers are 17.5, 162.5, 377.5, and finally 522.5. So once I've got these two, 17.5 and 162.5, all I needed to do was add 360 to both of them, and I've got the next two answers as well. So those are the values that theta can take, which will give you sine of theta equaling 0.3 in the region 0 to 720. There are infinite values of theta which would work and make sine of theta 0.3, but I'm only interested in the region I've asked for. Okay, so I want you to have a go now. Could you find all the values of theta in the region 0 to theta is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to 720, for which sine of theta is equal to 0.4. Okay, so pause the video, have a go, find all the solutions, make sure you have drawn a graph, it will help you, and I will go through the answer in a second. So, the answers to this. Firstly, you draw the graph, and it's the same graph that I had already, it's the sine curve, between zero and 720. So that's 180, 360, 540, and over here, 720. Then I want a height of 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is slightly higher than 0 0.3. And it goes cuts through at four places between zero and 720. There, 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 and there. Then I find on my calculator the first one. So I do theta is sine to the minus one, the inverse of sine of 0 0.4. And on my calculator it gives me 23.6 degrees to one dp. Then I find the other answers by firstly taking that away from 180, which gives me 156.4. Then taking that away, so then then for each of these two answers, adding 360 to them. So I get 383.6 and 516.4. So those are the four solutions that are shown in my graph. If you got those right, well done. What you should do now is practice this with all different types of, all, all three different trigonometric functions. So sine, cosine, tangent, so you'll feel fluent in drawing them, sketching them out, seeing where the solutions will be, and then using the symmetrical properties of the graphs to decide on the angles which for which the equation will be true, okay? So 
The best place to look for those questions is in this textbook. And it's exercise 8.1, so the first exercise in chapter eight. Now this is going to be key. So getting fluent in this is going to be key for the rest of this chapter. For things like applying this knowledge in advanced questions on the sign rule. So something special called the ambiguous case of the sign rule, which goes a little bit beyond GCSE. For solving more complicated trigonometric equations. And so you need to make sure you are fluent. So practice this until you feel like this is a natural process that you're going through. Okay, so go practice, enjoy, and I'll see you in the next lesson where we talk about the ambiguous case of the sign rule.